the art of fatherhood. How to break down the slander and defamation. The character portrayed may or may not be you. It might just as well be a puppet clothed in theatrical garments. The aim of this text is to influence you to ask yourself two questions. Do I really know? And how do I really know? The answer to these simplistic questions can have an earth-shatteringly profound effect on your outlook on life and those around us. To our friends, we are open. To others, the book may be closed, yet there comes a time when we need to respond to the goings-on of the world. There comes a time when we need to open up, to speak up, to stand up. Especially when we ourselves personally get affected by the relevant and irrelevant and purposeful actions of others. Not everything happens by accident and not everything is just the way that it is. Much of life is unconscious purpose. Many things are formed and shaped before us and for us cut down or chopped up into bite-sized, manageable and palatable chunks so that it may be consumed with the greatest of ease, without resistance, without question, without thought. Thoughts are impressions as much as anything. The universe is shaped and coloured and moved by human opinions. It is ideas that shade the world. It is the idea of anything that comes before the thing. Our dreams are based on what we believe to be real. That image in the mirror, however lifelike, is in fact the exact opposite of reality. The frame of reflection shapes the picture and the topic. We see not what is, but what others would like to have us see. The continuity of community seeks not truth, but what others would have us believe. It just seems somewhat easier that way, and it's a grand mistake. One of the less obvious traits of a change agent in the disorder of society is the ability to live in the shadows and from there control things. They do not tell people what to believe, but they control their belief through the gradual transfer of information, which may or may not be accurate. They begin in standard fashion by offering up themselves as a reliable and trusted and vulnerable source of fresh information. And then they gradually prize open the vulnerabilities in others to slowly begin the process of leveraging the world. They are most adept at perception management, deflection and re-education at categorization and classification. Of course, nobody is going to tell you directly what to think, but the narratives of life influence how we feel, and how we feel changes how we think, 
and how we think changes how we act. History is less written by the winners than it is by those who have acted. Clarity just heightens the disparity. Have you ever considered how much of what you believe to be true may actually be false? How would you know? Have you seen the depth beneath the surface? Life is questions that slowly uncover where the lies and the liars lie. We must be sure of what drives us. To avoid becoming a cog in the devil's wheel, we must come to terms with the unrealities. We must learn the things that we do not know, and perhaps unlearn a few things along the way as well. Take note. Verify several times in several ways at the source everything that you hear. Because mistakes are as common as changes in the weather. Trust nothing foggy or unclear or unsound. Because understanding comes from the demystification of the process. Seek first-hand evidence to substantiate acts and facts because the ill-informed very quickly become the misinformed. Take time in forming opinions and so carefully draw conclusions through understanding what is actually impossible and unreal. Beware of influence that changes your opinion. As the pieces are moved around the chessboard, so their value changes Seek caution when reasoning with emotions because how you feel will affect your ability to remember and connect. Understand motives because not everything that we are told is actually is. A fair judge listens intently to both sides without judgment at first. You can think for yourself, but only when you have discernment and you remove assumption. The aim of the transfer of false information is to create a new reality that disposes of the old thinking. And yet, we all know we cannot build castles on the impermanence of sand. Therefore, we should quickly come to realize how the ground under our feet becomes quicksand, as we are required to provide more unreal evidence to support the unreal narrative. Pretty soon, we are all invested in perpetual fantasies. And as we pile on the stories, the original reality should become more and more absurd, almost cartoonish. But this is our investment. Should it crumble or come crashing down, then so falls our ego with it. Competent control, which may by its own very nature be disorganized, ensures that the other side never gets heard by creating a precarious rift or abyss between any parties or associations involved. It does this by making your own stance your own enemy and by forcing you to choose sides without really reflecting with much depth on both sides or properly on either side for that matter. Decisions to please others often run contrary to what we need to do to level up ourselves. Meanwhile, the inability to contemplate other realities or paths limits the very future thought to a binary choice. And yet we are not machines. 
The ultimate goal of all of this is alienation and isolation through the apparition of circumstances that never were. It's a foothold in an alternative reality. You may pause from time to time to wonder, who is the greater fool? He who tells the lie or he who believes the lie? The truth is that they are one and the same. Each makes an insecure investment in an unsound property. Each takes a risk without fully understanding the consequences of erasure of the truth. No matter how well you wear it and live the lie, the truth is the only permanent security that we have. Yet, most choose to ignore it or bury it and defend to their own death the burial. You don't have to attack your enemy if you can persuade others to do that for you. You don't have to slander people if others will repeat what you have said. You don't have to work if others are willing to work for you. Perhaps the oldest lie in the book is that you have to control what you can control and focus on just that. The trouble is that all of the dominoes in life are connected and nobody can be fully sure where the last ripple will be felt. The nature of the devil is to let you in on their plans and to employ you in their fight, to class you as a key piece of their struggle, to empower you with their cause, to guide you to a new place and a new understanding. There's an old saying that nothing is fair in love and war. The fact is that it is very often the loveless that find themselves at war because they have no other cause that they consider worth fighting for. So they carry a torch for another's vision. Unthinking is simple. It involves balance. It involves freedom to maneuver and freedom to challenge. It involves insight. It involves understanding the past. For years, we have been taught to see the world through a box. And yet, it has always been a flat reality. Only off camera and off stage are the unobserved key moments in life, the jokes, the asides, and the glimpses of humanity. Though we know the process, it yet remains difficult to unlearn what we have ingrained or imprinted into our subconscious. So beware of the noise, the fuzzy logic, the incoherent imagery. Be aware of all the spells cast and know that they have a limited time which they last. Then the veneer fades and we see the truth. But whether we are able to embrace it is a matter for the individual and their conscious self. Whatever you do, remember this. Only a war forces people to take sides. To know somebody better is to know them well. All information has some influence. Inaccurate decisions have unsightly consequences. To find the truth, we are required to scrub the rewrites and search for originals. One who informs you may trust you, but also may not fully respect you. Finally, always ask yourself, why? 
the art of fatherhood. <laughs>